Before, for our first uh, conversation today, we have President Magvelashvili, and he'll be uh, interviewed in a conversation with Voice of America's Ia Madamishvili. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. It's an uh, honor and privilege to uh, be here with you on the stage, and honor and privilege to be moderating this conversation with the President. Um, it was a very emotional opening of today. Uh, we're all touched. Many countries have been touched. Um, people that knew Senator McCain have been touched. You've met him many times, both here and in the U.S. What, is, what do you remember of him? What do you think his legacy in Georgia would be? Well, first of all, let me uh, thank all of you for doing this here in Georgia and bringing the spirit, emotion, and values, and uh, the feeling to this town, to this country, to this society, and sharing our our pain on for the loss has also some kind of a positive impulse because it, it, it unites you against the good that Senator McCain tried so hard to bring to this complicated world and complicated politics and specifically to this complicated environment. Let me also add that Senator McCain is a national hero for this country and we mourn him as one of our person in arms who stood who stood so firm, who stood first of all when we were in, in, in trouble. Uh, the feeling, the, 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 first, the first thing that I could say about him is that he represented something that we idealize about America and about U.S which is not always true, and people are in many cases different, be they Americans, be they Georgians, but there is always an ideal, sort of a, a, a positive ideal, uh, maybe manageable character who you cherish in that nation, and uh, Senator was a person like that because he was so idealistic, so much believed in values, but not only that, he had the power and the strength and the guts to put this into action. And among the, among the comments that I saw, uh, that I heard today, which were great and uh, touched, touched our heart, I think one of the specific things is that he stood for the rights, for the human rights of individuals all around the world, but even further than that, something that was mentioned about this little guy, and. In this case, I was talking about Georgia, because you go to any capital, and as, as, as a president that has his own message to be delivered to any capital to, or to any political leader or to, or to, or to any place in the world, is, is basically a couple of phrases. I mean, hi, I'm, I, I'm Georgian. This is a small country, but it matters. It has its, its heroic fight with a very powerful and strong neighbor and nuclear power that has occupied our territories and is trying to bend our freedom. And though we are not a big market, though, though we are not a big, big economy, though we are a couple of million of people, but we matter. And this is the opening, basically in one or another form, an opening phrase, and we matter, and we matter for good reasons for you and for for, 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 the, for, the, for the global process. And, and this is something that you are saying in one or another meeting all around the world. Well, I mean, there are maybe few people you don't need that introduction. And that was Senator McCain with whom, who just, the first time I met him, he rushed into details and like, what are you doing there? How are you standing strong? Are you still firm? Do you, do you keep your, uh, your commitment to this fight for the freedom and don't be broken and you know that we are together with you. And this continued then later for the several years that we had communication and this feeling that when I go to the hill, 
I know that there are chambers that are going to open for me as a, as a president of Georgia without, without further questions and go to details of how do we do the business, the good business together. This was the, this was the, the room of Senator McCain and I, I really, I'm really thankful for his, for his good that he has done to this country. Thank you for that. You, you talked about his support for Georgia's democracy, Georgia's development, this desire to keep fighting for itself. Where do you think Georgia stands now in that desire to keep fighting, keep it up? Well, we are in a complicated time in, and in a complicated environment, and we should acknowledge that. We, and let's, let's, like, let's look at the basic, basic basics of, of where we are right now. We are a country whose 20% um, of whose territory has been occupied. It has been occupied officially in 2008, but let me remind everyone that the occupation really started in the beginning of 90s. Russians have occupied parts of Georgia in the beginning of 90s. In 2008, they made it officially with their regular military force. This is one thing. We are a country that, are, that is in progress on its European integration, on its NATO integration. We are a country with developing democracy, with its own challenges and with its own complications. But most importantly, we are a country which is under attack like any pro-Western democracy, or maybe even to put back like any Western democracy is under propaganda attack to try to undermine some of our basic truths. And those basic truths are following. Georgia has the right for the choice. Georgia has the right for territorial integrity, sovereignty, and there are no legitimate reasons to question this. To question this in perspective, and to question this in, in, in the essence. We have, to, we have to go through this, we have to be, and we as a society have to congregate and unite under this truth. Our choice is democracy, our choice is to be pro-Western, and our choice is to fight Russians out of the Georgian soil where they are present with the violation of every value, be it international law, or be it human values, or be it historical truth. So, under this propaganda, we have to congregate under, this, under these values, and I hope we, we manage to do so. You are very passionate when you talk about uh, Georgia and its path, its future, um, but at the same time, you decided not to run for president. Why is that? Well, there are reasons not, not to run. First of all, you should, uh, uh, you should acknowledge the fact that some people are also capable to do the, to do the job. The second is I've been, I've been doing this for five years and I've been doing this from first day till the last day, trying to, be, to hold to those values. I think that with the new president's responsibilities, <laughs> in a constantly changing constitution, which is dramatically flowing, and it's not even within the one presidency. Within, within the presidency, you have several changing responsibilities. It is difficult to, to finally understand what your job description is, because it's changing all the time, you know? So <laughs> I would like to give someone else a chance to acknowledge what their role is, but, but let, me put it, let me put it in another way. No matter what the Constitution is, at this point, President of Georgia has to hold to one simple truth. Georgia is a sovereign, independent country who has the right to protect itself and the right to choose its allies and no whatsoever explanation of the occupation of Georgia or the aggress aggression against Georgia is or will be acceptable neither for Georgians nor for our allies. This is the mission that president with any responsibility should be saying 
in Georgia and outside of Georgia. Thank you. This question might be too much into the, into the Georgian politics, but I'm sure you get it. I'm sure, I'm sure you get this question very often. I'm sure you people, your uh, non-Georgian uh, friends also ask you. What do you think your refusal to run for president, what impact do you think that would have on other candidates? Well, uh, I think I did uh, a pretty good uh, job behind the scenes uh, in the way I led to this moment because uh, for, uh, since the constitution would change my ma my, has changed my main, my main message was the Georgian dream as a ruling party and the party which has constitutional majority and basically holds all local government positions should not be running for presidency and I was saying this in one or another form and I was pushing on this message and uh, I was refraining to name or uh, to, to sort of talk about my candidacy. I was talking about that they cannot have a candidate because it would be really unpleasant to see everyone starting from the village governor to the president from one party. I think I reached the point, no, I not think, I just, I'm, 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 I'm clear, I reached the point because Georgian Dream did not name their candidate. And by this, I created a possibility for opposition to compete for presidency. Basically, what I gave the opposition in this situation, and by the way I pushed on this issue, I gave them a more clear, fair playing ground to compete for presidency. Whether they will be able to, to use it or utilize this, this is up to them, how much they have ability to unite or congregate or, 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 or create alliances. This is one of the weakest points of Georgian uh, political life. I mean, we love to unite against someone, but we hate to unite for something. So. Uh, this is very Georgian. I'm, I don't, I'm maybe not very Georgian. This is, uh, this is how it is. So maybe the, the opposition will be able to unite for something, but at least from my perspective, I, from how I did not name myself and how I pushed the issue that Georgian dreams should not be engaged in this stuff, at least I gave them a much more plainer playing ground. Now we'll see what they will do. I don't have much hope, but uh, we'll see. It's not a surprise to anyone that Georgian politics is full of contentions and um, uh, disagreements, some, some disagreements that we know will stay mm -hmm. as disagreements. You as a president, um, how do you, you clearly have some issues with other people that may become presidents uh, after you uh, that you would not agree with. but. There are some issues that you see need to be continued uh, uh, from the president's perspective. What, what is the continuity that you're looking for after you? Well, um, first of all, I mean, uh, I will respect next president no matter who the person will be. Uh, and I, because I, I very much do re respect the presidency for this country for which I had to fight for five years because I had to fight not only for this institution, so I had to fight for president's office to maintain the, the, the office, the respect to the office, for the, for the court system, for the national bank, for the Security Council, uh, lots of these fights were lost, unfortunately, and uh, the the important state institutions like National Council is dissolved. Um, the situation is complicated in the courts. The, the respect to the, to, the, to, the, to the institutions is weakening and, and this was my fight. So uh, in, with presidency, I will respect the institute. Uh, main of the issues that have to be continued is uniting around something and which which is once again I mentioned this is a problem you're uniting about the common goals and this is this should be understood this is not this is not talking in one voice this is uniting for something 
and that's something, some things are very important. That is, for instance, our pro-Western choice. That is our right to sovereignty and territorial integrity. That is our choice for free society and democracy. We have to unite for these values because that is what, that is what makes nation a nation, that you have united on some of the basics. That doesn't mean that we talk in one voice. We, we should be talking about different issues and debating, but there should be basics that we unite upon. And I think the president should continue that. The second thing is something that I've already mentioned. Georgian president will have a challenge to go to many capitals and have to advocate at this time will have to advocate our standing case with Russia. And it is clear and blunt that we should say that Russia attacked Georgia. There were no legitimate reasons how this could be in any instance justified. Anyone who is trying to justify Russia's aggression on our soil is on the side of an aggressor and is on the dark side of history. And one more thing, president is a commander in chief. This is something also any president should remember. I mean, talking to people, you're not only talking to politicians, in any of your comment, you are a person that is heard by your men and women in uniform. They should be confident that the decisions that you are making and the comments that you are making is relevant to their service where they put their lives to jeopardy for the good of this nation. So in this respect, they should know that holding their arms and standing for the civilians of this country and protect and opening the fire to an aggressor will never be questioned by anyone in this nation. So this is the thing that has to be continued. And I will ask one more question, and then I will open the floor for questions. So please uh, get ready for questions. Um, what do, you talked about? You talked about the uh, uh, expectations, sort of, from the armed forces of the country, from uh, how the president should should um, represent the country outside of the country. What do you think the president should represent for the people inside? And how, how do you, how, what do you think people should perceive of their president, especially after this election? Well, um, as I say, <coughs> the president had limited, uh, limited I would say not say rights, but responsible rights uh, uh, with the, with the constitution that was changed in 2010. The rights were very limited. They are further limited to the extent, to the, to the extreme extent with the new changes of the constitution that were, that were held in 2016, which I believed and I advocated that were very, very wrong, not only about presidency, but about many other things. But with these new rights, even with these new rights, president is the highest elected official in this nation. Being able, the only person being able to talk in the name of the nation and the only person being able to talk in the name of the state, not the government, but the state. And holding this very high uh, position, for sure, uh, president has to try to create links and to try to unite society. Now, this is not very, this is not very easy uh, because there is lots of tension in this society. There are lots of differences. And in, in a way, this is good. But you should be very patient. I mean, you should try to unite. And try to unite does not always mean talking for both sides and saying nothing, basically. Trying to unite might mean criticizing one side or applauding to the other side or criticizing both of the sides. but. 
this attempt to unite should be, and unite around the values, should be something that President will be doing, and should be doing, and should be giving this kind of hope and perspective to the society. Once again, we, we have to find links where we unite. This is the weakness of our, pro, of our, of our political life. Thank you for that, President. Do I try to be short, I, I guess we have yeah. more. Some questions in the audience? I don't see any hands, so. Um, yes, please. Uh, in the beginning of your speech, you spoke very um, emotionally about fight against Russia and Russia propaganda is one of the most um, difficult uh, problems for us. What could you tell your most important achievement in this field? What was your most efficient step against Russia and Russia propaganda during your presidency? What could you name? Well, uh I don't, I don't think I will try to sort of put it in a sequence what was my uh, uh, most efficient uh, step, but there are several things. First, um, what Russia pro you should understand Russia propaganda from inside. What Russian propaganda tries to do and the uh, messages that are crafted in FSB are following. Let's find the differences in this society try to make those differences extreme and confront the society with each other. So one of the things that anyone who is trying to fight the propaganda to do is try to piece down the confrontation in your society and try to bring society to some kind of agreements. This is, I mean, not directly saying that Kremlin or, or, or Putin is bad, but trying to, f to piece down your confrontations in, inside of your societies. This is one thing. The other thing is our very active attempt to unite uh, with our European and uh, Euro-Atlantic allies. We have been all the time persistently trying to become more closer to Europe and, uh, and uh, US, and our latest achievements with the uh, special format of, 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 of negotiations with EU, which is the college, college government format, and the standing bill on Georgia uh, on the hill are the latest achievements which bring us closer there. And one more thing, I think that we were very active in our relationships with the ex-Soviet Union capitals, which is also very important to keep them on the track of being together. Uh, I, I try to be short, so yeah. to, 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 to find. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. President. Sorry, can you hear me? Mr. President, in your very interesting and, 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 your very interesting and eloquent remarks, you, um, uh, there, was one, there was one name that didn't come up that I know you were skirting around, which is Mr. Ivan Ishvili. Um, a lot of friends of Georgia are sort of quite worried the degree to which one person has such a grip on public life in this country. I appreciate it's a rather indelicate question, and it's hard for you to answer it frankly, but could you address it in whatever way you feel is possible. You made a strange, why is it indelicate or why couldn't answer oh, it quite frankly, okay. I mean. I was just to make it's it. not about my ex-girlfriend, you know, we are talking about, I mean, what is the question that then? <laughs> the, question is, it, the question is how big a problem that this one man's dominance of Georgia is for you as president and for Georgia as a society. Well, uh, uh, the, 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 problem, uh, the problem was, uh, it was, it was the main part of my, as I understood it, of my political life as a president was uh, that I was in confrontation with Mr. Ivanishvili and the Georgian dream had a good reason to hate me because of this, because I, I don't find another reason why I should be so much uh, so an enemy for Georgian dream. But, uh, in a way, I think this is normal. I mean, politicians everywhere, everywhere around the world, they try to find a reason why to hate each other. So in this case, it was uh, Georgian Dream had a good reason because Bidzina didn't like me, so they, 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 they did it for five years. Uh, it was uh, tough in the beginning. It was a uh, challenge in the middle, and it was boring. It's boring right now at the end of the presidency, <laughs> but uh, whatever. Uh, so... Uh, 
Is it a problem? I don't think that uh, strong people are a problem for, for any society. I think weak people are the problem for the society. Weak politicians who are comfortable to hide behind the image of a strong leader are the problems. Weak government officials who can say, it's not my fault, it's all someone else's fault. They are the problem. So I believe that we should hold responsible for any kind of influence of any strong person, not the people who, the people who are comfortable with this. So do I prefer to have more of a wealthy, strong people in Georgia? I prefer to have more strong people in Georgia with lots of money for investments for, or even strong leaders than the weak prime ministers, weak ministers, weak political leadership who find comfortable under the shade of any leader. So I think that that's a challenge for any democracy and we all have to stand bold when it's for our responsibilities and, and not try to hide be behind, uh, behind figures who we, we, we try to create as, in many cases as scapegoats, by the way, for our weakness, inability to hold to principles and our uh, our conform is an attempt to live easy lives in a in a complicated environment. And one last question: uh, If there are any, maybe we can combine the two, please. Uh, thank you. Mr. And Pro please identify yourself as well. Sure. Uh, my name is James Nixie. I'm head of the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. Um, Mr. President, you've uh, described your country several times as ex-Soviet, which is uh, factually correct, of course. But I wonder if there is a different way we should begin to describe your country and your neighbors and the other countries around the periphery of Russia, which gets you further away from and out of the Russian shadow, the Soviet yoke, um, so that we can begin to move forward. But, or, or do you feel you have so much in common, perhaps, with your neighbors, that ex-Soviet is the only way to do it? But I wonder if we're not still... It's, it's, it seems to me as a way of staying in the past, as we're describing ourselves as ex-Soviet here. I wonder if we can do better. Well, I, 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 I don't remember really using the term, but I, I could be using the term. I, I, um, we, uh, I hope we... I wish we were only ex-Soviet country. I mean, we've been occupied by Russia before the Soviet Union, unfortunately, so only ex-Soviet would be even good for us. I mean, we've been <laughs> occupied much earlier before. Uh, but um, I think that when trying to describe Georgia, to, to sort of try to say what Georgia is, I think that this is a country with a very long-standing history a history of 2,300 statehood years here on this place with these people, with this culture, being able to overcome much bigger empires that, than Russia is or Soviet empire was, to maintain its identity, to build, maintain its, its, its character. And now at this point, I think what, how we could describe ourselves, we are an independent nation trying to become part of a European family of nations where we belong culturally, but where we are not yet politically. So I think that well, that's, that's how I, 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 usually identify, uh, I usually identify ourselves as, 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 as a country of European culture, but still trying to become part of the European institutions. So I think that's where your question led to, or maybe a leader country of Eastern partnership, but that's not also a, a, a very good sort of term. A leader country in, uh, in, in uh, among NATO, NATO um, hmm. yeah, uh, as, as aspirant. aspirant countries. I, well, a, a leader, a leader in everything, and unfortunately not getting all that we, we that we uh, deserved and are entitled to. So maybe something like that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. And the last question, please. Okay, I am Gocha Gogoadze, Chairman of International Association (TAP). But Senator McCain and my American colleagues and friends called me George from Georgia. I knew Senator McCain many years and I escorted him, of course, in my native Batumi town 
And when we came, it was sunny day, and he said, George, where is rainy? I said, Senator, it will be. And after an hour, had been cats and dogs rainy. Okay, what I wish to say. At first, I wish to say thank you so much to Mr. Karamurza. Senator McCain never hate Russian people and Russian culture. He was a fan of Russian culture. Especially he likes the Russian poetry on silver ages, and especially Osip Mandelstam's and his uh, poem about Felici Mne Tiflis Garbatis Nitsa. Senator McCain had been a brave person. He was the greatest fan of Georgia. And he always agreed with me. We should make everything that in Georgia at first should be developed civic citizenship education. And so sorry, Mr. President, like Minister of Education and like President of Georgia, you made almost nothing to develop citizenship education. Yesterday with Ambassador Mackenzie, we talked about possibilities for developed education in this country. All institutions in this country is weak because we have very, very weak citizenship education. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I acknowledge there are things that I didn't do. I mean, that's, that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone. Mr. President, I wanted to um, comment about your dedication and persistency and consistency with Georgia's Western aspirations and um, everything that you've done outside of Georgia, inside of Georgia, to keep this country on the right path towards the European family, as you mentioned earlier. So thank you very much for doing that. And thank you. Uh, please join me thanking Mr. President. Thank Alice. you. You have some closing remarks to make.